You know how you use a bit of software and you've used it for years and you think you're using lots of it? It happens with Microsoft Word, for example. We're, we're using it to write our stories, but we don't always pick up on all the extra tools and powers and functions that exist. It happens with Microsoft Excel, it happens with Word. It happens with software that we use as writers. Heck, we apparently only use 10% of our brains and we're always looking for ways to improve and grow and, and leverage that massive muscle that we have in our heads. But this, this episode is about taking a look at a platform, taking a look at some software and tools that we may be using parts of, but maybe not leveraging all of the options, all of the functions that were designed to remove the friction and to give us more time to get focused on our writing. And that is what this episode is all about. Welcome to the Stark Reflections on Writing and Publishing podcast. There has never been a better time for writers. More information, options, and opportunities are available to you. But navigating these requires insight. Join Mark Leslie Lefebvre as he draws upon more than a quarter century of experience as a writer, a bookseller, and a trusted book industry consultant to explore and reflect on the writing and publishing landscape to help you make informed choices on your writer journey. Hello, Reflectives, and welcome to episode 333 of the Stark Reflections podcast. This is your host, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. I'm just back from 20 Vegas, well, just back. It's Thursday, November 16th as I'm recording this, but I'm just back because I'm still playing catch-up from a week away at the conference, and I have not had time to go through one of the amazing interviews I have in the bucket, I have in the queue, I have about eight of them, but it takes a long time to edit those, put the show notes together, etc., so I'm going to do the lazy way out again this week like I did last week and just get you something really, really quickly, but I think there's some good value in this. What you are about to hear is the audio from the recording of a talk I did last week in Vegas at 20 Books Vegas, which was called 10 Things You Likely Never Know or Didn't Know About Draft to Digital. Now, this could be a useful and valuable experience. Even if you're not using Draft to Digital to publish, you may be able to leverage some of their tools as an author yourself. So, that's what this episode is going to be about. It's going to have that. There's going to be no reflection, just this opening. I am going to skip the regular updates, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so I could just get right into getting this podcast out the door for you. But before we do that, let's hear a word from this episode's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by draft to digital It's actually sponsored by my affiliate link from draft to digital That's right, if you do not have a draft to digital account, it costs you nothing to set one up. And if you set one up at drafttodigital.com slash Mark Leslie, you're taking advantage of my affiliate account. And that therein is a tip that you're going to hear later in this episode. But you can set up your own affiliate, refer a friend program, they call it, for draft to digital and you get half of draft to digital's cut of whoever um, sets up a new account for a full two years so again because this is sponsored by my affiliate link for draft to digital if you haven't set up an account please go ahead and set one up under draft to digital.com mark leslie or if you already have a draft digital account go ahead and make your own refer a friend link you can get to that through my account, and you'll see there's a Refer a Friend program. Just one of the many great things you're going to find out in this episode of cool, awesome things that you probably didn't know about draft to digital And just a quick note regarding this presentation is if you want to follow along, there's a PDF of the slides that shows some screenshots, for example, you know where you can find the Refer a Friend program, etc., from my presentation and that'll be available to all listeners over on patreon so if you go to patreon.com slash stark reflections it'll be open not just to the awesome patrons who support this podcast but to anyone it's just going to be one of those open posts with the content but you can check it out there and of course the link to that will be in the show notes at starkreflections.ca Ten, nine, eight, 
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, you guys are awesome. You guys are so awesome. <clears throat> okay, my name's Mark, and this is 10 things you likely didn't know about draft to digital and that may be a slightly different title than the one I gave to Craig to put in the, the program, but that's okay. You didn't know I was going to do that. If you feel so inclined to yell out, I didn't know that, that's okay. You can do that throughout the presentation. But if, if you are somebody who knew all these things, beer is on me or whatever other beverage of your choice uh, afterwards, okay? And that's me personally, not draft to digital. So there, <laughs> then things. You didn't know. So I am Mark Leslie Lefebvre. <clears throat> I am lucky enough to work with the amazing, great people at draft to digital and I've worked in the book industry for more than 30 years. And I love the fact that I get to work with some of the smartest, most passionate people who actually truly care about authors. Did you know how much draft to digital cares about authors? A lot. Yeah, you knew that. So that's one thing you knew. So draft to digital is self publishing with author centric support and the priority is you because we make money when you sell books. So we want you to sell books. We want to give you free tools to make you allow you to sell those books and that's where it begins. But we don't make money until you do. But again, you knew that you knew how much we care and you knew that that was an important thing. And you're likely going to know a few of the things that I'm going to talk about, but I am willing to bet and I'm willing to bet my personal credit card on this. I'm willing to bet there's some things here that you did not know. And that's the whole point of learning new things, right? That's why we're here at 20 books. Yeah. yeah awesome. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so you likely know about our distribution. You likely know, I'm assuming you know that you can publish your books to Amazon, to Apple, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Tolino, Vivlio, Gardner's, Smashwords, you can get into subscription services. Did you know that Scribd was called Everend now? That they changed the brand? Yeah, you knew that. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, did you know you can get into Kobo Plus if you're publishing to Kobo through us and that it is available? It's like Kindle Unlimited without the exclusivity. Did you know you can get into the largest suite of library wholesalers in the world? Overdrive, Adillo, Baker & Taylor, Bibliotheca, Dreamscape, Slash, Hoopla, Box, and Palace Marketplace, which we just launched a little while ago. But when we add a new partner, there's a pop-up that'll ask you if you want to mass opt in. But oftentimes when we log into our dashboards, we're just excited to go and do the things we came to do. So we often just click, close that and we forget about it. But did you know that there is a way to go in and mass opt in at any time? And I didn't know this until I was building this presentation. I went, oh cool, I forgot we built that. But you can go to multi-book actions off of your account tab on draft to digital and this is what I saw when I went in and I'm like, oh my God, these are the mass opt-ins to all the different stores. And if you haven't opted in your, uh, any of the books and, and you have a big catalog, you can go do it yourself or because we like you, email support at draft to digital.com and we can take care of it. And you go, Mark, I have two, uh, 200. Well, you're going to be saying Tara, who's our director of, uh, of customer service. You can say, you know, can you opt in all my books? And we'll go, of course, we'd love to because we love you authors. And the other thing too is we haven't stopped and Dan is panicking right now because he thinks I'm going to tell you who we just signed with, but we just signed deals with two amazing partners, a retail partner and a library partner. But you're going to have to pay attention to Jim's awesome press releases if you want to know, but they're coming soon and I could not be more excited because getting books into more platforms means more opportunity for us to partner with other great people in the industry, but it also allows us to get your books into new platforms and that is so exciting. But here's a bonus, did you know? And the reason I put bonuses in is because I thought, okay, 10 is a cool round number. I'm just gonna throw in extra ones and I don't have to count anymore. <clears throat> but do, did you know that we have so many international partners that we clean your prices for you? Did you know that? So I see some people didn't know that, but some people did. But you, we have next level territorial pricing. You put in a US price, for example, 499. We will automatically clean it up for you. Now, Kobo Writing Life, they're awesome people because I'm a Canadian and I like Canadians, but we very apologetically in the Kobo would say, here's what we think you should do with your price. And they apologize for telling you about it. But what we do at draft to digital because American company, right? So we're a little bit more aggressive say, we not only are going to tell you the good price, we're going to clean it for you and round it to a normalized price. So my 499 US book is actually available, not at 672 Canadian, but it goes to 699. But we're also nice enough that we still give you the control if you want to override those prices. When you make a book 99 cents, we automatically assume you're probably doing a price promo. So we automatically round it to dot nine nine or the equivalent currency and those other weird currencies that we don't understand or I don't understand as well, I should say. 
we do that for you, but you can still override that if you only want it to be 99 US. But there you go, next level territorial pricing where we do the cleanup for you. So here's a trick that I use as an author. When I'm doing a price promo, I go to D2D first, I put my price in, I take a screenshot, and then I use that as the model for when I'm going to, you know, directly to some of the other retailers, and then I use the same prices, although I can't control, I can't control my New Zealand prices separately in Amazon, but I can. Did you know you can do that with, with draft to digital Now, now you know. <coughs> You likely know about the templates that we offer. If you need an ebook, you probably know, or maybe you don't, that you can take a Word document, and we have more than 21 unique template designs that you can use for print and ebook. Make your books look sexy and sharp. It's kind of like vellum light in many, many ways, but it is free, and you don't have to own a Mac, and you can do it. What I've often done, for, even when I worked at Kobo, I'd go to draft to digital I would do the free ebook conversion, download my EPUB, which you can take away for free and do whatever you want with. We actually have people in Kindle Unlimited who come make EPUBs with our tools and then only publish to Amazon directly. And that's okay, because we want to make things easier for authors, and maybe one day they may want to publish with us, and it's so easy for them just to push a button and do that now. But you can do that, and I would do that, and I would load it directly to Kobo, I would load it directly to um, Amazon as well. <clears throat> but did you know, and this is number two, that did you know that we have a poetry template? Because the same rules don't apply. We actually created based on author feedback. So if there is something in relation to book conversion templates, etc., that you really, really, really want, yeah, of course, tell, tell Nick and Dan and Jim and I when we're here. But more important, uh, also, email our customer support team and tell them you want it that way, because believe it or not, that gets tracked a lot better than us coming back and saying, you know what authors were saying, so you can help yourselves by communicating directly. The other thing you should really, really do is you've told us how much you love us so many times, and I feel so great about that. Please email support and just tell them how much you appreciate them, if you appreciate them. If you have a problem, tell us, please. But do, do tell them. Tell them how much you love them. We get all the love, we get all the appreciation, and all of these amazing people we get to work with get to hear our stories of, yeah, you were in Vegas drinking with authors, how cool. <laughs> <But> <laughs> did you know we drink in Vegas with authors? <laughs> did you know that you have actually the ability to do full cover wraps in our D2D print? So if you only have a front cover wrap, if you only have a front cover design, you load it up, we will machine perfect make a cover wrap for you where you can actually add the colophone. Did you know that the little icon on the, on the spine, your little like Stark Publishing, that's a colophone? Did you know that? There you go, haha, -ha, another bonus one that I just snuck in. You can load that to your spine, you can change the text, you can change the fonts, they are built in fonts and there's only about 12 of them, but you can still change the size, etc. You can even load a cover uh, author a photo as well for the print books. So again, I may, for the larger books that I do, I may uh, pay a designer to do it or do it myself, but for the smaller books that I do, I'll often just use the automatic cover wrap generator, which is kind of cool. But here's another bonus, did you know? We also have got you covered. Did you know, and this appears now, sometimes when you're looking at your books, that it'll pop up and say, if you need a uh, book cover, did you know that you can go to the services now under our wing? Self pubbookcovers.com and get access to some professionally designed templates that you can choose from and you can custom generate some of the books. So that active reader book that I had on the screen earlier was one I bought from Self Pub Book Covers many, many years ago and you still have the ability to custom design that. It's now available and it's trying to make it as easy as possible right inside the dashboard. <clears throat> How many of you use an admin assistant? Nobody has an admin assistant, so we'll go through this one really quick. Oh, yeah, back in the, right there, there you go. Did you know that it's a violation of KDP terms and service uh, and others that to give someone else your login? Oh, you did know that, that's cool. But did you know that with draft to digital you can assign an admin assistant to go in and update your books and all that kind of stuff? Uh, yeah, fantastic for virtual assistants as well. So you can go in uh, under account, you go to account sharing, you have to enable it. And then this is an example of different uh, things that, you know, book management, report management, and I can revoke permissions uh, as well so that people can go in and have access to update my books but not touch my banking uh, or whatever. Or potentially a, a literary agent working with me, I don't want to have to do the reports for them. The agent can go in and look at my sales and maybe pull those reports to help me, you know, get that really awesome uh, book deal. Um, how many of you guys collaborate? Collaborate with other folks? Okay. 
Uh, did you ever publish anyone else's books? Do you ever publish, uh, like, co-authors, stuff like that? Did you know? Did you know that we have payment splitting? Did you know that we make it easy? Did you know that you don't have to take off your shoes and socks and do the math? Did you know that as a Canadian, when I get paid from an American company, and then I, I lose money on the Bank of Canada exchange rate, and then I have to change it back to pay my American co-author, I lose money both on both of those transactions? Did you know I'd rather have draft to digital pay them directly and issue them a tax form? Because I'm not going to issue you a U.S. tax form. <laughs> <clears throat> you didn't know that, did you? But that payment splitting is such a great tool. Did you know you could have up to 99 co-collaborators and conspirators in a book because everyone gets 1%? But you can divide it up any way you want to. This is an example of a co-author book. Because it's in my Canadian Werewolf series and, and Julie is my co-author, normally I would co-author at 50-50 because, because it was under my brand. We did a 60-40 split. We go in, we check it out. You can see you have a paid collaborator, and I can set, I can specify for ebook, I can specify for print, and if I've done my audiobooks through Apple, which I will talk about in a second, if I've done it that way, we can do that with the audiobook payments that you get from Apple as well. So that's kind of a sexy time saver for you. This is an example of the Obsessions anthology that had 16 contributors, <clears throat> and so you can kind of see the various percentages again everyone got a little bit of a cut every single time that sells and I as the publisher get to pocket 20% of that and I do not have to issue tax forms unlike me do any of you plan ahead <coughs> yeah it's a mixed bag right um, we have price scheduling so if you have a promo and you're like oh I'm at 20 bucks this week but I wanted to do a promo for whatever and have it launch on the 8th and end on the 10th that you could have last week or a month ago or two months ago or whatever gone in, set the price schedule. The important thing with that is that it will change the price. We will send an XML, XML file to our retail partners. We will tell them in the file, change this at 12.01 a.m. local time so you don't have to wake up at midnight and go and do it. Midnight where? There is a globe. It's more than, even, even the U.S. has more than one time zone. Ha <laughs> ha. But that's the important thing is you can price schedule it and then you can sit, like set it and forget it. You're not going to forget if you're doing a price promo, but you can set it and know that the retailers are going to have it. Now, I like to say this is the equivalent of going to a concert where you want to line up for tickets and you sleep in a sleeping bag so you can be the first in line to get a ticket. So that's what the file is doing for you. It's in the sleeping bag for you while you're at home. It's going to be there first rather than getting stuck in traffic on the way to go pick up those tickets. So price scheduling is really an important tool that you can leverage. Um, so you can get the data in advance. You can change it back, uh, have it go right back to regular, regular prices afterwards. And that's available through the promotions tab when you're looking at your books but you can also pre-schedule if you plan ahead you can do pre-orders and you can do assetless pre-orders did you know you could do assetless pre-orders yes awesome cool did you know what an assetless pre-order is some of you so oftentimes for a pre-order you need to have the file you need to have the interior file and the cover file well you can do assetless pre-orders with us where maybe your your interior files with your editor still and you're not ready to release it and you know what sometimes murphy's law if it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And if you put a dummy file up there, what if it gets through? What if someone reads that? You know, you never know. I, I accidentally put my private diary in as a placeholder. Oops. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my God. <laughs> Mark picks his nose and he talks about it? No. So that's one of the things. So you can load that. This is an example of a book I'm, I'm writing right now that's coming out in March. And it's up for pre-order. And I can see my pre-order sales on Apple and Kobo, for example. I can see where it's live. And there are some platforms that don't accept assetless pre pre-orders such as uh, the, some of the library platforms as well. So that's something to pay attention to. But, but, but here's a bonus, did you know? Do you guys know what pre-sales are? Oh, you know what pre-sales, not pre-orders. Because you guys must be Smashwords authors. Yeah, yeah! all right. So a pre-sale different than a pre-order is allowing the opportunity for really awesome special people, your readers, because they're awesome and special, to get access to the book before it's even available for anyone else. This is great for street teams. This is great for making sure they can get the book in a controlled fashion. They can still give you money because they want to give you money and they can get the book early. So this is something we're going to be pushing a lot more once we revise the awesome Smashwords store. But that is something Smashwords authors have been able to do for a long time. And it's something that you can now do through draft to digital to the Smashwords store. So that's an exciting thing that you can control. 
So it has to be listed at Smashwords. It has to be in a pre-order state. And you can't do it without an asset. So you can't send that memoir. <laughs> you have to put the actual book. And even if it's, even if it's in a state that is an early, like an advanced reader's copy, which publishers often send out before it's proofread, that's OK, so long as your fans are accepting. So maybe, maybe they're going to help you with it. They're going to tell you where you can fix some things. But anyways, it, you still have to have that. So <clears throat> this is just an example. Do you want to make it public for everyone? Do you want to make it private? Uh, do you want them to uh, agree to an anti-piracy pledge, <laughs> if honor system? And do you want to offer readers to answer your phone for you? If, or whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> do you want to offer readers an e I'm just kidding, email address, sign up. If for anyone at home, that was because there was an awesome ring that I heard in the room. Um, how many of you love Drafty Digital so much that you want to tell all your friends about it? Okay, yell loud. I love you, Drafty Digital. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, you don't have to just love us. You can make money off of your love for us. We have a really great, did you know about the Refer a Friend program? If you're going to tell people about us, why not make some money off of it? It's like an affiliate sale. This is an example of, you know, and, and I have a custom link, draftydigital.com slash Mark Leslie, if you go and sign up for, if you haven't signed up for Draft to Digital, go ahead and do it there. Mark Leslie will get money. To, uh, for two years, he'll get money out of Draft to Digital's pocket, not the author's pocket, for the sales. And you can just do that in the awesome Refer a Friend program. Okay, you know, I've probably referred a thousand people to Draft to Digital, and I've only remembered to s tell a handful of people to use this because I always forget about it because I'm so busy and excited. But hey, $63.91 is, you know, that's beer money, right? That's uh, awesome. Or that could buy a coffee here in the, in the lobby. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, two coffees sometimes, right? <laughs> uh, how many of you like promos? Yeah, I really like promos too. How many of you guys know the awesomeness of Megan Spann, who works on the Draft Digital team? Do you guys know Megan? Do you know how awesome she is? Well, I'm telling you how awesome she is. Megan is our full-time author promotions coordinator. Her full-time job is to work with our partners, with our retail and library partners, to find promotions to sell your books. Because how do we make money? We make money when you sell books. And Megan is so passionate about helping authors. She is so passionate about finding awesome books that may need more visibility. Yes, it's cool. Yes, let's feature James Patterson because people want to buy James Patterson books. But let's feature those authors whose books are, look amazing and they're amazing. We had a chance to talk to people and they haven't yet been featured. So she works behind the scenes all the time, pitching books to the retailers, to the libraries, talking up authors. There's some examples of some of the things she does. Here are just some of the most recent promotions. Did you know that you can sign up online? Uh, and if you, the, we actually basically have it's d2d.tips slash conference. And you can go there and fill out a promo form and tell us what books you publish, what genres, in uh, which platforms you use. You may go direct to some, you may use us for others. That, that will be a thing that you can set, you could set and say, I publish urban fantasy and I use you for Apple and Barnes and Noble and Overdrive. So when Megan gets a promo, she'll email those people who have books in the appropriate genres at the platform, but she also will drop those in the Wide for the Wind Facebook group as well, because sometimes it goes to people's spam folders and stuff like that. So th these are just some of the most recent promos <clears throat> that we've done that Megan has launched. And you can see this one's Canada only, or this is global. This is US. This is just some examples of the promos she does. This is an example of a recent Apple promo called Vampires versus Werewolves. And this is a mixture of traditionally published books. This is a mixture of uh, books published direct to Apple. And this is also a mixture of draft to, draft to digital books as well. One of the other things we just found out is that Vivlio, one of our partners in France, has been featuring not just French titles, but English language titles because they actually found that there's a market for it. So they've asked us to recommend some books to feature in English. But they also mostly do French promotions. And that was something I didn't know about until about two weeks ago. Here's just a look at some of the work that Megan's done this year. She's done 80 promo campaigns, ran between all of our partner stores. And this is, again, this, this is already a week and a half old. I'm sure she's done stuff while we've been here. Top three promotion contributors have been Apple. Uh, and it is hard to get new an Apple promo. You know, we send 100 titles and maybe one or two get picked, but we keep trying. And Apple has, has indicated an interest in wanting to 
make sure different people can get promos over time, which is always exciting for them. Overdrive, library platform, 15 promotions, Kobo. We've had over 20,200 entries received. We're constantly looking for those promos. Here are some examples of behind the scenes things you may not be aware of. We went to the Overdrive conference in August. We gave this printed catalog of draft to digital titles to 500 librarians. We had a booth just like Penguin Random House, just like HarperCollins, just like the publishers with indie author titles. We ran some reports and said, are you publishing, is the book published to Overdrive? Yes. These are the top sellers. These are the books coming out in July. These are the books. And it was tricky because it's like, this book isn't out yet, and it's not on Overdrive, but the authors published every other one of their books to Overdrive, so chances are it was a trick, I, is a risk I took. We, we printed these catalogs. I actually brought a handful of them. There's still a couple at the D2D table, but this is just an example of some of the behind-the-scenes stuff we're doing to help you sell more books. <coughs> oh, yeah, there's the sign-up for d2d.tip slash d2d promo form. But at our table, the tablecloth, you can scan the QR code and some of the brochures I have here or even the business cards you may get from us have that little QR code. And if you go to d2d tip slash conference, you scroll down and you'll find that. But that's one of the things you can do to help us help you. But you don't want to always be dependent upon us. What about D DIY promos? You're familiar that you can do DIY promos with, with us? How many of you knew that? That you, yeah, you knew that, of course. <coughs> Julie knew that. You probably have a video about it. <laughs> Book launchers, yeah. <laughs> uh, books to read landing pages. You can create landing pages with books to read for your universal book links. You can actually link to your email list there. You can link to, you can link to your author website as well. Uh, you can create a free author profile there, uh, which is kind of like Author Central for all the stores which is kind of cool. You can control the carousels are. You can feature what you want. You can spotlight. Right now on my own page, uh, I'm, sh I'm basically showing the, um, yeah, I'm going to show you my page. Universal Book Links, this is just an example of one of my books. You see ebooks, you see audiobooks, you see print books, you see hardcover, large print. I don't have large print. Hardcover, paperback, large print available. I can custom name the URL. So if you take a look at the URL, it's just really ugly character generated thing gobbledygook but I can change it I can custom I can vanity name it so when I'm doing a radio or podcast I can I can read because you know a Canadian werewolf in New York may be a lot of letters less than the last name Lefebvre but it's still easier than 4JK you know hieroglyphic E P I and all those things and you can do that so long as the name isn't taken you can pick and choose we give you lots of analytics when you look at that. You can go in and see the analytics, and you can see, yeah, okay, this many landing people went to the page, this many people clicked, and here's the top three stores, which we've long had, but we now have the ability that you can see more analytics, and you can select custom, and you can actually see that. So maybe I only sold a book on Kobo last month, but hey, two people went there, and one person bought one, so there's a 50% conversion rate. That's very exciting. This is, this is the author landing page. This is the author central for everyone. This is, uh, again, bookstory.com slash Mark Leslie for my fiction mostly, and my nonfiction ghost stories. I can feature a book, latest release, pre-order, on sale, any of those tabs. I can custom control my carousels as well. So I'm in control, and I can have all these social media links as well as well as a link to my website, and there's a follow button as well where we'll automatically notify uh, people uh, of your new release on the platform that they've said is their preferred platform. I can also create reading lists. Uh, I've done some themed ones like Spooky Spaces where I could feature, you know, my own book at the top and then I can feature all kinds of other books. I can work collaboratively with other authors. I know Kevin Tumlinson who writes thrillers has worked with other thriller authors to create thriller landing pages and they all drive people to it. So again, it's another way of enhancing your collaboration. And did you know, another bonus one, that in Books to Read, you can add your affiliate codes. Again, another way to help you earn more because publishing wide and earning more revenue from more sources is one of the ways you can benefit as an author. Uh, this is an example of where you go to affiliate codes. You take a look at my account under affiliate codes, and then that will bring you to a page where you can copy and paste in the affiliate codes as well. So Amazon, I, uh, Apple, iBooks, uh, BNN, uh, uh, Kobo, Google, Smashwords, etc. Um, did you know that 
you're in violation of Avalon's terms and services if you use an affiliate link in your newsletter. You probably knew that. Did you know that you're not in violation of Amazon's terms of service if you use a books to read link in your newsletter, even if you put an affiliate code there? Do you know why? Because the affiliate code's not part of the URL. The affiliate code gets appended to it automatically after they come to the books to read page, even if it automatically reroutes them directly to the Amazon store. So you're not in violation because the code's not in the link. The code gets added to the link magic, well, not magic, there's dev people who do it, but it magically happens at the end. But wait, do you guys, there's more, yeah, yeah, you know the answer, yeah. See, you knew the answer to that one. There's another DIY promo opportunity that I'm so excited about and we are taking advantage of right here at Rave on Friday with so many of our awesome authors who've participated in this that you can go and make your own coupon codes. You can go in, and this is another thing under multi-book actions or through the promotions tab when you're looking at a book, multiple ways to get there. And you can go to the coupon manager and you can create a code. You can create codes, you give it names for tracking, you can say when it expires, you can do a discount type, set an exact price, a discount percentage. You can even limit it to the top 100 people. And you can go in and select, and this sorts by the various uh, series and, and brands that I have and I can go in and pick the titles and say for example I have a whole bunch of books for writers oh look killing it on Kobo an author's guide to working with libraries and bookstores wide for the win publishing pitfalls for authors accounting for authors oh my god 99 cents here's the code if you want to get the book at the Smashwords store Z B T Y 7 take a screenshot if you want to buy those from the Smashwords store, you can get those. But it's only for the first 100 people. <laughs> so act now. <laughs> Little marketing technique for you there. Um, did you know that you can do free narrated digital uh, audiobooks with our partner Apple? Did you know that? It doesn't cost you anything. Now, you don't have as much control like you would if you were working with a, a human narrator. But if you don't have audiobooks, it's definitely something worth checking out. And Apple has allowed us to also allow you to distribute those books to OverDrive for libraries as well. So if you are, I love to use human narr narrators. I will continue to do so, but there may be some of my books I haven't done yet because I can't afford it yet. Well, maybe I can at least do a digitally narrated one for the readers who can only listen to audiobooks and can't read those other books. It's more accessible for them, more affordable for them, and then I can use the money I've made off of this to put in my pocket and plan to pay a human narrator. That's not an all or nothing thing. It's something you can do. I created a little template for myself that I think is kind of sexy and I just plop my book cover in there because again, it's got to be square. Because again, uh, did you know that audiobooks are really based on CDs and that's why they, they're square? <laughs> just like our typewriter is based on the old the computer keyboard typewriter. But I use that template because I want to be very transparent that this is not a human narrated book and that's a, a thing that you can do. So this is just an example of what it would look like. Um, how many of you like more margin? <clears throat> how many of you like to make more? Yeah, yeah. That, I, oh, come on. How many of you like more margin? Yeah, okay. Why? Some people don't put up their hand. You don't like margin? Give it to me. Okay. <laughs> Smashwords. It's not just your ebook your way. It's more margin, yes way. So when I say smash words, you say more margin, yes way. You ready? Smash words. I love you guys so much. This is awesome. Did you know that the lowest margin you will make on the Smashwords store, even at 99 cents, is 56.78%? I'm just going to round it to 57. Is that okay? It's about 57%. Maybe if I say 56, that's not bad. This is not just based on the price of your book. If a customer puts 10 books at 99 cents in their shopping cart, that brings the total of the shopping cart to, I'm not good at math, but about almost $10, right? Let's say they go to 11, because then I don't have to do that weird math. It's more than $10, which means every one of those authors whose book at 99 cents is in that shopping cart will get 80% for that book. Isn't that awesome? You, at the shopping cart, they can put as many books. So it's because it's our store, we have to pay the credit card company. So the credit card company at a 99 cent sale is a lot more expensive. We don't have as much money to give you. But if it's a $10, uh, whatever, the, we can give you more money because we're paying the credit card company and then we can spread the wealth with all of our authors. So collaborating with people 
and author friends to buy more books on the Smashwords store can even help you make 80 percent or 81 percent on your 99 cent books. That blew my mind when I realized the power and the options and I can tell you that our passion for helping authors which is what drives us in this business is going to be something we're going to use and this is part of the merger is focus on draft to digital for all of your publishing needs and Smashwords. I believe there are five there are five big publishers in the world right now. We think of the big five retailers. I believe that Smashwords could and should be the sixth biggest retailer in the world. They're already Smashwords already has hundreds of thousands of active customers every month. Smashwords is already available in dozens of countries more than Amazon. Smashwords is giving you more margin and we have plans to improve and grow that to help you grow more margin. Yes, you make way more margin when you sell it direct, but not everyone's ready to sell direct. It's a lot of work, taxes, et cetera, et cetera. Building the shop, you know, Shopify store is great, but maybe, maybe you'd rather just make, you know, 70%. At a $499 book, you're making 77.42%. So I like more margin. I love helping authors, and so does everyone at draft to digital Our passion is doing what we can to help you. If there are things you want, things you need, please don't just tell us here. Email our support team and let, the, let us know those things. The things we build, the things we prioritize are based on the things you tell us you need. Our goal is to make it easier for you to write more books because if you write more books and you publish more books, well, how do we make money? We make more money when you publish more books and sell more books. If we can save you time, if we can bring in automation that's going to help you in your process, if we can provide free tools and resources with no costs up front, that's what we want to be able to do. But then again, you probably already knew that because of our passions. So here's another bonus that you probably did not know, and this is where Dan gets nervous, is that as of October 2020, 2023, that draft the digital and Smashwords have helped uh, bring more than one million books into the world. And I love the fact that a million books from awesome authors who had a passion to tell a story and to change the world. And that's what you guys are doing here is you're telling stories, changing the world, and we can't do what we do without all of the awesomeness of you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for listening to the Stark Reflections podcast. You can find show notes for each episode at starkreflections.ca. The music for this podcast, Laser Groove, was composed and produced by Kevin McLeod. Check out more of Kevin's great music at incomtech.com.